So in the traditional contract between the individual and the collective, and let's use an employee working for a company as a, a sort of an archetypal example, if you will, um, there are some standard features to how this works, right? So usually the organization is structured hierarchically, and if I'm going to join the collective, I'm going to get plugged in at some point in the hierarchy. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And in these organizations, there are certain norms and standards and rules, and those norms might include a purpose or a mission or a mission or a vision, and they might include values, right? That, that those could be part of the norms of the organization. Some of those norms will be explicit and some implicit. And if I join the organization, I'm explicitly or implicitly agreeing to follow those norms. True? Good. And um, usually there's some arrangement in which I'm going to do something for the organization. Usually I'm either going to do work or I'm going to provide some sort of resource like money or something like that to the organization. And then the organization is going to do something for me. If I'm providing work, usually the organization is giving me money. Not always. But there's some sort of trade there that's part of the contract. Does that make, does it, you agree with that? That makes sense? And then the last part, which I think is most important, which we don't really think about very much, is I actually cede some amount of power and control to the organization. That I actually give up some level of self-determination in exchange for being a member of the group. Especially if the organization is structured as a hierarchy. And the further down on the food chain I enter the organization, the more power and control, the more self-determination I give up in exchange for being part of the organization. Would you agree with that as well? Good. Now, we may not think about that. It's, it's often not a consciously engaged in deliberate uh, adult act of giving power over. It's usually much more unconscious and subtle than that, but it's definitely going on. So, uh, we've started to see a lot of side effects from this contract that don't really work that well for us, right? As we look at how the world is functioning, in particular how business functions, we see that there's a lot of symptoms showing us that that's not really working all that great. What are some of those symptoms? Depression. Depression. Crisis. What's that? Crisis. Crises. Uh huh. Yeah. Burnout. Lack of trust. Lack of trust. Low, employee Low employee engagement. That's a beautiful one that covers a lot of territory. Uh huh. Lack of innovation. Waste. Waste. Staff turnover. Say it one more time. Staff turnover. Staff turnover. Very high turnover, right? Which is a side effect of disengagement. So people will constantly be moving from organization to organization looking for better conditions. But since the contract is roughly the same in all, in all the organizations, that just tends to go on and on and on. And they're not really finding some place they can land. The longer someone stays in one spot, usually the lower the organization is and the more likely they're going to leave. So it's a question of how long they can stand it in a certain sense, right? So I want to get at some of the beliefs that are underlying this. If we're using hierarchy as the organizational structure, and we'll talk more about that in the breakout this afternoon, um, then there are some beliefs about hierarchy and why we choose to use it that are fundamental to how this contract works. For example, one of the beliefs is somebody has to make the decision. It has to be somebody has to be accountable. The buck has to stop somewhere. How many of you have heard that coming out of somebody's mouth at some point? That's a belief, right? It may or may not be true, but people behave as if it is always true, right? Another belief is that people need to be told what to do or else there'll be chaos. It's another belief that's part of hierarchy, right? What are some other ones that are kind of built into the whole idea of hierarchy? What other beliefs are kind of inherent in there? Yeah? We're not a democracy. We're not a democracy. Yep, I've heard that one. If we don't watch them, they'll misbehave. If, I, if we don't watch, they'll misbehave. We've got to keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. Command and control. Command and control, absolutely. Right? They have to control it in order to get it to turn out correctly. Good. So these are some of the beliefs that drive the hierarchy. Right? So this is, this is the contract that we've set up, and there are a lot of negative side effects of it. And there are a lot of organizations trying to do something different. And values are one of the sets of tools that people use to try to do something different, yes? How many of you have implemented organizational values? How many of you have found benefit from it? 
Good. I would argue, however, that the implementing of organizational values doesn't fundamentally change that contract, that we have to do more than that. Does that make sense? Can you see that? So there's a, there's a project that's been going on now for decades, and I call it patching hierarchy. Right? Where we're now making modifications to the fundamental contract without actually changing the contract itself. For example, trying to make more collaborative organizations but leaving them in a hierarchical structure. That's a patch. Right? Or creating bottom-up channels of communication within the hierarchical system, which is inherently top-down. Creating a higher purpose for the organization would be another one. There are mission, vision, and values, which by the way, most mission and vision and values don't really work that well uh, because, in my judgment, we'll talk more about the, that this afternoon, they don't actually generate much emotion. That's the real standard for testing missions and visions and values and stuff like that. And usually those efforts are deemed failures by the rank and file employees, even if the leaders are excited about them. Good. So these are all what I would call patches to hierarchy, ways of modifying the system that don't necessarily change the fundamental contract. Am I making sense? And, we, and we've done more and more and more of this. In fact, there's a very interesting, I wasn't even planning on talking about this, but it's a very interesting side effect that comes from doing all this patching, which is we keep adding more responsibilities onto the job description of the hierarchical leader. So originally it used to be that you were supposed to give orders, and you were accountable for the result. That's the old, you know, building pyramids hierarchy. Right, the classic one. It's about 3,500 years old or so, something like that. Good. So, um, no, I'm sorry, 5,500 years old. So, uh, now we say, well, this doesn't really work all that well. We want to patch it. Let's make the hierarchical leader also responsible for conflict resolution. Good. Okay. All right. We can do that, too. All right. And for employee development. Good. And now the, the hierarchical leader has to be a communication up and down and maybe sideways too. Right? What else do they have to do? What are some other roles of the hierarchical leader that have been added? Lead the culture. Absolutely. Lead the culture. Motivate, Motivate those employees. Create value. Create value. Good, and the list goes on and on. So now you can put down six or eight different, you have to solve HR problems, stuff too, right? Six or eight different individual roles that have all been collapsed together into what we call a hierarchical leader. So much so that it's now not feasible for any single human being to perform all of those roles well. And whoever's working for that person now can justifiably complain about whichever of those roles that person happens to be bad at. Maybe they're bad at facilitating meetings, or they're bad at project management, or they're not a warm and fuzzy communicator, right? Whatever it is, they'll get kind of beat up in, at the water cooler for that, but it's actually an unachievable task. It can't be done. No one can do all of that stuff. 